Luna leads Love and Habeck in the clouds of the heavenly realm. Love pesters Luna about the quest she mentioned, but Luna simply tells her to shut it and just follow. Irritated by Luna's response, Love speaks out at how she acts tough, but when in front of undies, she goes damsel in distress mode. Love also adds that it is considered harassment to hug someone without their permission. If you recall when they went to the beach, Luna hugged Jiyu in real life. Luna can only tell her again to shut up. Luna sighs and talks about how chrono life values freedom yet limits people's appearance in the game. Luna asks Love if she knows why this is the case. Love says that it is related to the law and explains that users may commit crimes with looks that are different from theirs in real life. Luna says she is correct and adds that there are some exceptions, like hair color. The law only allows engagement in virtual reality as long as the person's character looks similar to their real-life looks. With this in place, developers have to abide by this rule, but one game developer company doesn't like this rule. Luna says that this company deems users freedom with high regard. Yet, this enforced law limits how much the users can customize their characters. The company found a loophole allowing users to change their appearance to get around this law. Love finally understands what Luna wants to say. Luna reveals this is the ability to change the user's gender using the angel's earring. She explains that this is the game developer's way of showing how much they want to give the users their freedom. Luna says they might only be the only users currently in Heavenly Realm. Still, there will come a day when other users will soon level up and reach that realm. Luna adds that it may or may not be on purpose. Still, the quest to return to their original gender is relatively easy to accomplish. With a wave, Luna points her staff to a wall of clouds and clears the path. Love is amazed by the scene before her. A tree in a small pond with clear water. Luna calls it the spring of the skies. She then explains that drinking water from this spring will cleanse the body and let them return to their original gender. What? Is that easy? I guess the company finds it fun to have everyone change their gender. Love is excited and runs toward the spring without hearing further explanation. She suddenly stops in her tracks and starts questioning Luna as to why she brought them there when their current goal is to search for Riot's weapon. Irritated, Love walks off and tells Habek that they should go and look for his master's weapon first. Habek awkwardly smiles as he reveals that this is actually where Riot's weapon is sealed. This, of course, makes Love stop once more. Ha, I feel embarrassed for my bias. Trying to brush it off, Love says the water is so clear that looking at it already quenches her thirst she announces that she will drink, and Luna simply tells her to do so while mocking her. Love takes a handful of water and drinks it. A notification appears, saying that her body is now cleansed. With a flash, she transforms back to her original gender, and the system announces her clearance of the angel's earrings quest. It also explains how wearing the earring will let her change her gender whenever she wishes by using the transformation skill, which is a hidden skill with a 24-hour cooldown. Love is both glad and relieved that she finally returned to her original gender. Luna walks to the spring while saying that she did mention how easy the quest is. Luna takes an empty bottle out and fills it with water from the spring. She explains that it still works the same even if the water is placed in a bottle, meaning there is no real reason for others to go to the heavenly realm just to complete the quest. Wow, the goddess of life is being so generous with the explanation even though our MC is not present. Luna then adds that Noob is too busy saving Riot to come to that place, so she intends to give him the bottle with the spring water. Upon hearing this, Love reaches out her hand for the bottle and claims it must be heavy for her. This, of course, starts a verbal between the two. Habek stares at Luna and wonders about her real identity since she knows many things that even Habek doesn't know. He thinks about how she is always present in the crucial scenarios of Chrono Life. Habek can only describe her actions as someone who wants to be on the front row sit of the brave warrior's accomplishments. But as Habek molds over it, he draws to the conclusion that while everything seems to revolve around the brave warrior, Luna has also been there the whole time. He starts to wonder if Luna is the actual center of everything happening in Chrono Life. Well, she is the instigator of most story arcs, so Habek's suspicions are not unfounded. A weird sound comes out of nowhere, startling the three of them. Luna tells them to prepare for battle as she hides the bottle with the spring water. Luna says that the guardian deities are coming to protect Riot's sealed weapon, and this is the reason why she came there to help them. She explains how the guardians are more challenging than the angels who greeted them since they are responsible for sealing Riot's weapon. A silhouette appears, and its unfathomable shape makes Love prepare herself. Luna announces that the guardian deities of the heavenly realm are called the Minions, the minion comes in three types, the cannon, melee, and long range. And they look nothing like the banana-loving minions we all know. 
Their cute appearance makes Love gush at how adorable they look and rubs her face on one. Love claims that they really are dangerous since they just stole her heart. The minion she just hugged smiles innocently. But then it suddenly spits on Love's face, irritating her. The affection here is too one-sided. Luna then says that the minions despise anyone from the demon world. Love being the demon king doesn't really help in the situation. The minion now shows hostility by calling Love a dirty demon. And Luna warns her not to be fooled by their appearance. As Love wipes her face clean, she hears a crackling sound. The previously cute and small minion transform into a humongous super minion, which is their true form. All of the guardians are now in their real forms, and Luna announces that this is where the real fight starts. Back to our MC. Leia claims there is no escape against an army of more than a hundred angels. Ji Yu looks at them, ponders for a moment, and then claims this is the smallest army he has ever faced. Our MC's claims are valid, though. He has fought three million of the World Alliance Guild, 500,000 of Yufa's army, and one million anthromorphs. Leia ignores him and commands her army to slay the human intruder, before Ji Yu makes a move. Riot tells him not to kill the soldiers because they are only being controlled by Leor, so those eyes glowing before is indeed mind control. Riot adds that the soldiers didn't do anything wrong. But Jiu simply reaches out an open hand to Riot, making a villain his face. Jiu tells him to pay up. Riot looks at Jiu with disbelief, thinking how despicable this human before him is. Feeling that he has no other choice, Riot offers to buy Jiu's items for a high price without limiting how much Jiu wants to sell. Jiu smirks at this and admits that he is very satisfied with this deal. He then takes hold of his wooden stick and swings up at the approaching soldier. He comments on how lucky they are that he is only using strike without killing on them, while Leor can only stare at what's happening before her. Now let's go to where another action is happening. A super minion swooshes in for an attack, and Habek lifts a hand and activates his sixth mirror skill. The Mirror of Defense. A big mirror flashes before Habek, stopping the incoming attack from the super minion. Habek says its durability is nearly infinite as the super minion continues plowing numerous attacks on it. Habek then smiles, saying it is his turn to fight back. Habek activates the first mirror, the Mirror of Piercing Light. The mirror appears above the super minion and illuminates upon it. Habek says fire, and a burst of light appears and attacks the enemy, making it scream as it vanishes. The light then disappears, and the cloud where the attack hit is left with a big hole in it. Habek suddenly wobbles when a big thud occurs from a nearby fight. He looks at the others and is amazed at all the explosions happening. Red explosions? We all know who's doing this. As the smoke disappears, Love appears in her unleashed essence of the Demon King form and uses Annihilation on one of the super minions. The enemy lifts an arm and shoots an attack of its own. The two attacks meet, causing a big explosion. Love is facing the long-range type of super minion and it has the ability to copy an opponent's skill and utilize it by using its left hand. Habek watched the fight with admiration, thinking that he must help Love, but before he can even do so, Habek is suddenly stabbed by the super minion coming out of the hole. He is surprised that his piercing light attack didn't even make a scratch on the enemy. Apparently, the super minion that Habek is against is a melee type that has complete immunity to physical and magic damage. Huh. Now we know why Habek always gets injured. He tends to underestimate his enemies, causing him fatal injuries. Love got distracted by what happened to Habek that she wasn't able to defend against the copy of her enemy's annihilation. Suffering a critical hit deactivated her essence of the Demon King, and she fell to the cloud near Habek. Two of the super minions loom over them, and the long-range type prepares to attack using annihilation. With all her energy spent, Love softly calls Undies for help. But instead of Undies, Luna says boom and it immediately explodes the left arm of the long-range super minion. The enemy screams its frustration at his broken left hand. Luna then mocks Love for being weak even though she is the Demon King. Love slowly sits up, but Luna tells her to stay back because she will take over this fight, and she plans to show them what the Goddess of Life can really do. Wait, does this mean Luna is already done dealing with one of the super minions? Anyway, let's start a new chapter with our MC's swing up. The soldier falls with a thud, and another soldier charges in. But Ji Yu simply flips his wooden stick and smacks him. He smiles as he calls the attack. Flipped wooden stick smack. Riot is skeptical if what Ji Yu did was even a skill. Like before, another soldier charges for attacking, but unlike the one before, the incoming soldier aims for Ji Yu's back. Unfortunately for him, Ji Yu notices and smacks him while turning. 
The soldier flies off with this hit and gets thrown off to another soldier. Once again filled with glee, Jeeves strikes every soldier he crosses paths with. He laughs, saying he will slay everyone. Of course, Raya hears this, and he scolds the brave warrior for having a memory of a goldfish. Jiyu only smiles at this and says that he will heed his request. He adds that he will do whatever he wants as long as the soldiers don't die. Raya pales at this, but he can't really stop Jiyu from wreaking havoc due to his current state. True to his words, Jiyu causes fatal injuries to his enemies while laughing his heart out. Raya can only scold the brave warrior in his head for being crazy. Jiyu suddenly stops, confused. He looks around and realizes that the hundred soldiers that Leor was boasting about had already fallen. That was quick. Even though he dealt a blow to each soldier one by one. He looks back, saying that there's only one being left to deal with. Leor glares at the filthy human as she clenches her whip. She deems that she has no choice but to fight herself and raises her whip. She mocks Jiyu. But our MC only smirks at her. Seeing that she's only planning to use her steel whip, Jiyu is confident that he won't get hurt by her crappy attacks. Riot yells for him to watch out, and Riot swoops in, carrying Jiyu off. Riot'll style. Yo, what kind of development is this? Leia was bound to get angry. For sure. The whip hits where Jiyu was previously standing as Riot dashes off. Instead of being grateful, Jiyu calls Riot a brat and commands him to be put down. Jiyu tells Riot that he won't die by Leor's whip. Riot looks at Jiyu and claims that even he can survive her whipping all day. But then he reminds Jiyu that he got trapped despite that. Riot warns him that he should be wary of Leor's charm skill. He explains that this skill can dominate for a short period, and it can only be avoided if one has a high magic resistance. Riot says that Leor's charm is extremely powerful, and her eyes are not the only thing that can be used to charm. Leor can clearly hear them and finishes explaining for Riot, saying that she can also charm using her whips, and with that, she uses her whip against Riot. Riot falls with a thud as Leor approaches them. Like any typical villain, she explains that using charm with her whip is way more potent than using her eyes. She adds that no significant amount of magic resistance can even hinder it. She even specifies how a simple graze from her whip can truly charm her opponent. She's a really good villain. She even took the time to explain everything to our MC. Jiyu shudders at Leor's OP skill, while Leor only laughs at his predicament. Instead of being afraid, I think our MC is actually excited about this. She dares Jiyu to take her brother. Leor's eyes glow, making Riot's eyes glow and effectively charming him. Going back to our heroes in the Spring of the Skies, the super minion roars while Love ponders at the Goddess of Life's ability to partially summon a monster from another dimension. This makes Love ask if Luna plans to summon that monster to fight against the super minions. Luna looks back at Love and smirks at her. She claims that doing that is overkill and a waste for the small fries before them. This statement makes Love shudder with both horror and expectation. Wow, it feels like our MC and Love are quite in sync. They even shudder almost simultaneously despite being apart. Okay, ignore that remark, it's just me. Shipping. Habek wakes Love from her thoughts as he sits up and claims relief at their safety. He says that Luna is a unique boss who is also the sin of lust, which puts her on the same level as the Great Four. Habak then explains that having Luna face their enemies will ensure their safety. Instead of feeling relief, Habak's statement only irritates Love more. She doesn't like the feeling of owing Roach Lady anything, even if it is her life. To make his point, Habak points out that the cannon-type super minion that Luna was fighting is already gone. Hearing this, Love looks around and confirms it for herself. Habak is sure that Luna has taken care of it while they were busy dealing with theirs. Habak can't help but admit his curiosity at how Luna fights. The melee type super minion grumbles, probably for being ignored by the human pests. He brings down his fists multiple times, making Love exclaim at how reckless their enemy is getting. And she worries that the clouds they're in might fall apart with its attacks. Habak smiles at this, reassuring Love that the clouds of the heavenly realm can take in these kinds of attacks. But then he adds that it might not be the same if the brave warrior decides to destroy it. Luna uses her skill, the creation of life, to create a new body. She raises a hand and mocks the super minion. The enemy rushes in for another attack, but Luna only clenches her raised hand into a fist. With a smile, she says boom, and the arm of the super minion explodes into nothing. The enemy roars as if in pain, but Luna only mocks at it with an apology. She claims that she will instantly kill him to make up for it. Luna once again lifts her hand and says boom. The melee type super minion shivers in fear with drooping eyes. 
It mutters its last words and bursts into pieces. Boulders fall from where the super minion was. While Habek expresses his disbelief at what happened. Habek claims that Melee-type minions are invincible, and seeing Luna crush them like nothing is quite a horrific scene. There's no doubt that her skills are on par with our MC's abilities. Or they might even be greater. The long-range super minion looks at its crushed companion and mutters something before it runs off screaming. Love is surprised at how the enemy reacted, but Luna is unfazed as she raises her left hand again. As she says the word boom while closing her hand into a fist, the super minion also explodes into pieces. The enemy mutters its last as its head falls and crumbles. Luna smiles at this and looks back at her injured companions, claiming that the guardians are finally gone. It's now time for them to look for Riot's weapon. Habek holds onto his stomach and asks Luna how she managed to slay a monster immune to physical and magic damage. Instead of answering immediately, Luna looks at Habek's wound and uses a skill on him. She then reminds him that she is the goddess of life, which means she has skills that deal with life, whether it is to heal or destroy one. Yup. There's no doubt that she's too OP. Luna gleefully smiles as she says this, but Habek only feels fear at this proclamation. She adds that immunity to physical and magic are nothing compared to her divine skills. Love listens intently, surprised that there are skills that fall under the divine category. Luna reminds them of their mission. Habek agrees but still can't help commenting on how scary Luna is. Luna simply dismisses this and tells him that she doesn't wish to get wet in taking Riot's weapon from the bottom of the spring. Habek immediately understands and says he will do it. Seeing that Luna heal Habek, Love asks Roach Lady if she won't heal her as well. Luna only looks away and says that Love can lick her own wounds. This obviously irks Love, but since they're Love rivals, she can't really expect Luna to heal her just like that. Now let's go to the action happening with our MC. Riot chases after Jiyu while our MC ponders how much of a mess things are ever since his character turned female. Lol. The developers might have tweaked some settings just to mess with him. Jiyu is frustrated at how Riot is now chasing him right after Leor casts that charm spell on Riot. Leor doesn't want to charm a disgusting human and commands her brother to finish Jiyu off. Right after Leor says that, Love and the rest arrive, claiming that they found Riot's sealed weapon. Jiyu is relieved at their arrival and is about to compliment them. But he gets hit right on the face for not paying attention. Love is surprised by what happened. But Habek quickly deduces that his master has been charmed by Leor. As if things couldn't get worse, the sealed weapon glows brightly, and Habek realizes that the weapon is about to be unsealed since it is now closer to its owner. He then panics as he goes on about how Riot's real power will be unleashed once he holds his weapon. Thanks for the explanation, Habek, but you're too late. The sealed weapon continues to glow and flies off on its own. With a very bright flash, Riot takes hold of his weapon, and a notification appears. It says that the divine treasure of the heavenly realm is now in the hands of its master and his actual power will now be unleashed. Leora shivers with glee at this development since it has been centuries since she last saw her brother's true form. With the seal broken, Riot's wings change form, along with some hairstyle change. Eye upgrade, complete removal of his top, and a weapon in hand. The system announces the descent of the ruler of the heavenly realm and Riot of the Great Four is now awoken. Jiyu complains about getting his beautiful face hit and only realizes after that something has changed with Riot. Luna smiles as she explains how Riot is awoken because he now has his weapon. Jiyu is surprised by Roach Lady's appearance, and Luna simply smiles brightly and greets him. She also compliments his female form, but our MC is not buying any of it. Luna ignores the fact that Jiyu is not happy to see her and only presents him with a bottle filled with water from the Spring of the Skies. She then explains what it is for, making Jiyu stand up and thank her for doing something nice for a change. The compliment makes Luna happy to the point that she clings to Jiyu. This surprises Jiyu. But Luna claims that they are both girls right now, so it's totally okay to link arms. Wow, her logic is impressive. Though it is pretty questionable, our MC lets Luna do what she wants. This exchange makes Love jealous and curses Roach Lady in her head for being cunning. Leor is tired of their chit chat, but she urges Jiyu to drink the water from the springs of the skies as a special gift from her. Jiyu mocks her but still drinks the water from the bottle, similar to what happened with Love before. The system announces the cleansing, quest completion, his return to his original gender, and the new transformation ability. Jiyu smirks at this and claims that his catfishing arc is finally over. Now that Jiyu is back to his OG form, Love yells at Roach Lady to step away. Unfortunately, 
Luna claims a dizzy spell, refusing to let go of Jiyu. Ignoring the squabble, Riot points his spear toward Jiyu. Jiyu sees this and prepares to fight. Riot charges up like a Super Saiyan and charges at Jiyu. Our MC easily evades, but the release of power destroys a big part of the castle. Riot continues to attack, but Jiyu avoids each piercing. Jiyu is obviously having fun as he comments on how Riot has become quicker and stronger in his awoken form. Jiyu grins widely and lightly bunks Riot on the head with his stick, as he claims that he is no doubt stronger than Riot. Our MC's stats are maxed out. If he takes the Sin of Greed title, he'll be undefeatable. Of course, CEO Choi would be the exception to this. Riot receives the blow, but instead of falling, he clenches his teeth and charges up once again. But this time with lightning, Jiyu is surprised, but Riot doesn't give him time to adjust and strikes. The hit connects, zapping Jiyu and making him scream. Deeming it not enough, Riot brings down his foot, releasing the lighting, and brings down his spear on the ground with a thud. Riot uses crashing lightning on Jiyu, electrocuting him with his summon elite lightning magic spell. Getting zapped all over, Jiyu falls to the ground with a thud. Our MC is cooked. Love is so surprised that she asks Habek what that skill is. Habek explains that during their first encounter with Riot, his master wasn't his full power back then. Leor mocks at them and goes on another mode of explanation of how Riot uses his body as a conductor for lightning, making himself a lightning generator that even adds his level as the battle continues. She kept talking, but Love and Habek only stared at her since they couldn't really hear due to their distance. This character sure loves to talk. Too bad the others can't really listen to her explanations. As Leor commands her brother to slay the vile human, a creepy-looking head approaches her. A horrific scene makes Leor shriek, and of course, this is caused by none other than our MC. Love cheers for undies while Habak comments on how gross the brave warrior's healing factor is. He realizes that the person before him is actually Leor and not Riot. He then explains that his eyes haven't regenerated yet, and then drolls on about his eyes. This effectively disgusts and horrifies Leor. Then she remembers how this human also survived after getting cut in half. Yeah, it was a magic trick. Leor yells for her brother to get rid of the disgusting human. But before Riot could even make a move, Jiyu stretched his neck to reach Riot and chomped on his head. Jiyu continues to bite on it, declaring that he's getting his revenge. Everyone is disgusted by this scenario. Refusing to be continuously gnawed on, Riot charges himself with lightning. Jiyu quickly wibbles away as Riot announces his intention to slay our MC. But Jiyu only mocks him. Angered, Riot charges. Jiyu simply swings up his wooden stick calling the action. Swing up without killing. He then brings down his and uses Swing Down without killing. Jiyu is ecstatic at how he gets to fight someone who continuously increases his level since he can hit harder every time. He then unleashes Rapid Swing and, after a thought, adds no killing to the skill name. There's no doubt that our MC is a pro at irritating others. Leor watches this with disbelief, while Habak comments on how it seems like his master is being toyed with by the brave warrior. Love agrees with Habak and even adds that the Great Four is nothing against Undies. As they watch, Habek can't help but admit that the brave warrior is undoubtedly the strongest being in Chrono life. Riot falls to his knees, exhausted by the barrage of attacks he just received. Jiu grins at the fallen form of another enemy before him, then adds that the entire world would soon bow down before him as well. Love scolds Jiu as she and Habek come close. She asks if Riot is finally out of Leor's charm, but Jiu says he isn't. Instead of going further, Jiyu asks the Whip Lady to free her brother from her charm spell. Leo refuses to do so and clenches her teeth with disbelief. She can't believe that her brother lost and thinks about how proximity determines the strength of her charm skill. If they take her brother away right now, he will surely be free from the skill. Left with no choice, Leo determines that she must use her charm on the vile being before her. Yeah, she's pertaining to our disgusting MC. Leo aims to use her whip at the right time to make sure it works. Jiyu and Love look at the fallen Riot, and gets a good idea. Love is worried about this good idea of his. Riot grunts and charges to attack, but Jiyu simply bonks on his head. This stops Riot, but he goes again for an attack, and just like before, Jiyu bonks Riot's head using his stick. Riot gets frustrated, but Jiyu consistently bonks Riot's head. He then smiles while claiming that when something is broken, you just have to whack it a couple of times to make it work. I'm pretty sure that advice only works for old devices. Love wonders if this would even work. Hearing her doubts, 
Jiu says he's just teaching the brat a lesson and tells her to look. As the stick is about to hit, Jiu suddenly pauses, and everyone can see how Riot just flinched. Jiu laughs. Saying that Riot will slowly turn back to normal with this as Riot trembles in fear of getting hit again. Seeing that the human is occupied with making fun of her brother, Leira takes advantage of this moment and uses her whip on Jiu. Love yells for him to watch out, but Jiu isn't able to avoid it. Jiu wobbles as Love calls for him, but it is too late. Jiu is now under Leora's charm. Leora laughs at this turn of events while Habek and Love look over with disbelief. Getting her confidence back, Leora challenges them to a three-on-three -three fight. Leora continues to blab away, not realizing the healing factor has activated, and Jiu gets released from the charm skill. This Yandere is celebrated too early. Jiu blinks and observes what's happening before him. Leora continues to mock them, and she suddenly gets hit on the head. Leora sprawls on the ground, confused at what just happened. Ji laughs and admits he's unsure of what happened, but he is glad that there was a head asking to get smacked before him. The fallen soldiers recover, and they all get healed from Leora's charm. Love and Habek are confused by what's happening, and someone else speaks up, explaining that this is because Leora has fainted. It was Riot, and he adds that once this happens, everyone under her charm spell will be freed. He explains that this is Leora's weakness, Habek is glad that his master is back to normal. Still, Riot complains about his throbbing head, not remembering what happened while he was under Leor's charm skill. Habek says he'll explain everything to him later. Shush! Don't spill the tea, Habek. Now that everyone is back to normal, Jiu announces that there is only one thing left as he looks at Leor. Leor grunts and suddenly wakes up. She sits up and yells about being ambushed. But she immediately stops when she sees herself surrounded. She looks around her. Confused at what is happening, Ji reveals an evil smile as he announces that all that's left is to take care of her. The look on his face makes Leora shudder. Refusing to give up, Leora lifts her whip to attack, but Ji simply destroys her whip, effectively stopping her from using her charm skill on them. Ji grins as he says this move is a new edition of his Destruction Move series, Destroy the Weapon. If you remember, the first move of the Destruction Move series is Destroy the Planet. Ji looks down on Leora mocking her. Instead of fighting back, Leora tears up at the horrendous face before her. Love tries to restrain Unmees from looking like a villain. At the same time, Luna laughs at this development where Leora is surrounded by OP characters. Leora shakes with tears, falling down her eyes, afraid of what will happen next. Jiu laughs at this, saying she won't be killed. With an innocent smile on his face, he claims that he has no intention of killing her. This statement gives Leora a sense of relief, but she shouldn't have lowered her guards too quickly. A tentacle comes out of Jiu's mouth as he announces that he will suck her until she becomes a part of him forever. This confounds Leor, and Jiu takes advantage of it by letting his tentacle swoosh in for an attack. Seeing that she has no way out of it, Leor yells for her brother while closing her eyes shut. A hand grabs the tentacle, and everyone is shocked that Riot stopped Jiu from attacking Leor. Riot looks down and tells the brave warrior to not kill his sister. Jiu pulls back his tentacle and reminds Riot of what Leor did and how Habek even gave him a quest just to save him. Riot says it was a misunderstanding on Habek's part since Leor never really intended to kill him. He explains that Leor's method of showing affection is different. Yeah, your sis is a Yandere. He'll end up in danger once again. But like the good brother he is, he claims that all of Leor's actions were all for his sake. Here's a short flashback from centuries ago of Heavenly Realm. Riot announces that he will go down to the human realm and tasks Leor to take care of the heavenly realm while he is gone. Right. I almost forgot that this kid is centuries old. Leor expresses her surprise at her brother's plan to be away for a few years, just to go adventuring. Riot then explains that he plans to help the humans, but the demon king has invaded the human realm. And he is doing this because of yaf -Fi the warrior. Back to the present. At the mention of yaf -Fi, Ji recalls how Riot mentioned that he had fought by the side of Yafi before. While Love is skeptical at how this flashback was centuries old when Chrono Life wasn't even released at that time. My OTP is doomed. Why is Love being an airhead? Don't mind me as I quietly cry in a corner. Luna sighs at Love's reaction and deems it necessary to explain how Riot is only talking about the game's lore. She then asks if it was Love's intention to be the center of attention by acting cute and silly. This comment frustrates Love, but instead of replying angrily, she does the complete opposite. Love unleashes her cute side and talks funny by asking if Roach Lady finds her cute. I'm done crying. Love is hella cute and sexy at the same time. 
Seeing this only makes Luna pale. She takes back what she said and asks Love to stop it before she barfs. And that's how Love managed to get a win against Luna. Ignoring the banter between the two, Riot explains his sister became anxious because he hasn't completed his duty as the Sin of Sloth, so let's continue with the flashback. Leover is confused as to why her brother is doing this when Riot has always told her in Habeck that they are against the humans. She thinks that there is no need for them to care if humanity survives or not at the hands of the Demon King. Her brother's intention to help those humans when he is one of the Seven Sins only confuses Leor more. She mentions that as the Great Merchant, he even made the economy of humans flourish. She adds that he is doing all these other things, yet he has not yet completed his duty as a Seven Sin. Leor's clenched hand trembles as she fears for Riot's safety if he comes. Is she referring to God here? Leor asks her brother if Riot has a soft spot for those humans. Feeling that his sister needs to know the truth, Riot mutters that she might be right. He then stands from his throne and announces that whatever the case may be, he will still leave that day. Riot then walks away, leaving his sister to look after the heavenly realm. Riot's duty involves humans, but his love for humans makes him unable to complete his duty as the sin of sloth. This act goes against God, and due to his actions, is uncertain when he will meet his end. Knowing this, Leora swore to herself that when the perfect time arrives, she will annihilate the humans for her beloved brother. And she plans to do all of this, even if it goes against her brother's wishes. Now that we're done with that flashback, this sheds light on Leora's actions. Riot asks the brave warrior to end things by forgiving his sister. Jiyu expresses his dissatisfaction at ending things this way when everything around them is already destroyed. Our MC claims that Leor shouldn't have done it if she can't pay for her crimes and adds that paying with her life is only fair. Leor looks down, crying as she shakes in fear. Riot once again says that Habek misread the situation, and Leor only did it for him. He once again asks Jiyu to forgive Leor. Jiyu only replies with a curse and expresses his distaste for villains who justifies their evil actions. Bringing out his tentacle once more, Jiyu announces that Leor should take her punishment. Jiyu makes a devilish face as he wonders where he should start sucking. But before he can proceed with his plan, Riot stops him by saying that he remembers how Jiyu is the type who won't do things unless there is something in exchange. To make Jiyu forgive Leor, Riot promises that he will uphold his previous promise to him for the rest of Jiyu's life. This completely stops Jiyu, and he looks back at Riot with a red face. Jiyu claims that Riot's promise is not enough to buy him. While Riot observes that he finally got Jiyu, Habek looks at them. Thinking that he shouldn't have said anything before, Habek looks at Jiyu and Love, who are now glaring at him. Their faces are obviously scolding Habek for making this mess. They really suit each other. Even their thoughts are in sync. Feeling that he has no choice but to resolve this matter, Habek wobbles as he walks slowly toward Jiyu and Love. He then places all of his eight mirrors in Jiyu's hand and tries to smile as he asks them to forgive Leor in exchange for the mirrors he promised. Jiyu and Love look in with anger, and Love launches a verbal attack on Habek. But before Love can finish, Jiyu changes his mind and smiles as he accepts Habek's condition, as he did. The system announced the clearance of the hidden quest and Jiyu's new title as the Master of the Eight Mirrors. Too bad for Habek. He lost his mirrors for butting in on the business of the Heavenly Realm. Now that everything is resolved, Jiyu immediately uses a mirror to get back to the human realm as he bids goodbye to Riot and reminds the siblings not to fight. Thanking them for the good time, Jiyu, Love, and Luna return to Earth. Leia expresses her surprise at how Jiyu and the others just left. Riot says that Undi's already got what he wants and calls him greedy. Riot smiles at this, claiming that Jiyu is truly interesting. Now that they're back in the human realm, the first person they visit is Star. Star is curious about what happened, and Jiyu tells her about the water from the spring of the skies and how they can freely transform into a different gender. Jiyu, Love, and Luna use the transformation skill before her, making Star excited. They sure gained a lot from that short trip. A few days passed after the incident, and Luna shows up at the Heavenly Realm on her own. Riot expresses his thanks for how the previous incident ended smoothly. Luna smiles at this as she walks closer to Riot and says that things are not yet done. She expresses her distaste to how things ended this time, saying that it was childish and cliché. Stab, she suddenly stabs Riot in the chest as she says that the Heavenly Realm is a crucial story arc, and a fitting ending for it is his death. She smiles at Riot expressing her glee and pulls out her staff. She then throws a beginner's gray robe similar to our MCs, saying that this is a symbol of noob. Wow! She never changed. She still stabs others whenever she wants and instigates trouble wherever she goes. 
but it's a relief that she used a cape instead of those cotton white briefs. Luna says that if one has a brain, they could easily tell that this is planted evidence that was set up to fray new. Then she mocks Leor, for she will surely not think twice about this matter. Luna smiles, claiming, as if narrating a story, that Leor will be filled with vengeance and will no doubt lead the Heavenly Realm army to attack the human realm. With half-dead eyes, she predicts what will happen since they are only AI puppets. With what she did, Luna is right about how things unfold. Brimming with rage, Leor led the Heavenly Realm army and waged war on the humans. Riot's death has shifted the balance. Luna smiles as she leaves the dead body of Riot on its throne. She claims that Krona Life's last episode is now truly beginning. Whatever the last episode or chapter is, this is bound to be a very long one by the looks of it. The Earth is filled with chaos and destruction upon the invasion of the Heavenly Realm army. It's undeniable that they are so powerful, even if you base it on the level requirement to enter their realm, which is level 500. This only means that the user should be at least that level to fight against the beings of the Heavenly Realm. Aside from the soldiers, there are the angels with their monster-like appearance. This type of monster is utterly new to the eyes of many users. With their glowing eyes, they shoot beams upon the Earth, making it undeniable that they are the strongest monsters from their realm. Wait, are there even other monsters in the Heavenly Realm aside from the angels and minions? The strong force of the Heavenly Realm makes it impossible for the average user to fight back. Despite this, there are still some users who can help. A man raises a hand and uses Sanctuary on the fallen users, effectively healing everyone within the set area. A man steps in and announces that there is no need to worry, for he is now there. Wall, is the guy all might? Or did he just steal the lines? The users cheer when they find the number one user of the healer class has arrived. The bald man with shades, well-cut mustache, and beard is none other than Mr. Physical Therapist. The guy is a priest who heals and buffs others. The angels ignore this and simply shoot angelic burst upon the users. The injured users lay on the floor, and Mr. Physical Therapist appears before one. Let's just call him Mr. PT for short. Mr. PT tells the wounded man to clench his teeth and uses Holy Punch. The injured guy is surprised by getting a punch on top of his injuries and shouts at Mr. PT. The bulky priest claims he has just healed him. And the man checks his status and finds that he is indeed entirely cured by the punch. Now that Mr. PT is done with one, he turns to the others and announces that it is now time for a PT as he cracks his knuckles. Mr. PT, while known as the Rank 1 Healer, uses a unique skill called Holy Punch. Though getting punched hurts, this is a very effective healing skill that can heal almost instantly. One of the punched users complains about the skill and asks to be normally healed by Sanctuary instead. But like any other game, such skills have a long cooldown. And this is the case for Mr. PT's Sanctuary skill as well. The scene happening on the ground confused the angels. Still, they were brought back when a soldier yelled for the heavenly army to charge. The army charges toward where Mr. P.T. is, who is busy saving the artist of this novel. Jippery, Mr. P.T. and Jippery are now in a pinch. Seeing this, a female user appears and announces that she'll help Feisty. She's referring to Mr. P.T., but we're sticking to calling him Mr. P.T. The woman who just appeared is known as the victor of the royal battle tourney called Mint Chocolate but we'll just call her Mint Chaco. As a magic knight, she uses ice and wind magic against the heavenly army, effectively stopping them from getting close. Mint Chocolate claims that Krona life isn't about big damage. Instead, it is all about technique and control. Well, that's her opinion. Other characters will surely say something else, especially our MC. A soldier charges to attack, but Mint Chaco uses dig to make him trip. This made the soldier pause, and Mint Chaco took advantage of this to slay him. Mint Chaco continuously used various basic skills to defeat the other soldiers. She and Mr. PT gained popularity among the users present on the battlefield. Love looks over what's happening, commenting on how good the other users are and how many people she's never seen before are there as well. Love, Luna, and Giyu are on the roof, simply spectating. Luna explains that not all users will join the top guilds and instead focus on their own growth. As Luna said this, more rank users appeared on the scene, saying they would also help. Luna adds that these users are more interested in having fun, so they might be appearing now because they want to know how much they've grown after their visit to the northern continent. Aside from the rank users, the top five guilds join the fight, making it easier to take down the heavenly army. So during all those fights before, some users are choosing to ignore the main quest just so they can level up some more. A whip appears, attacking the users. 
Leor makes her appearance, surprising the users, feeling no pity. Leor unleashed multiple whip attacks, attacking users and destroying almost everything in sight. As the vice ruler of the heavenly realm, she led the battle against the humans of the lowly realm. As expected, those who were grazed by the whip come under Leor's control, and using the charm skill, Leor make humans fight with other humans. Giyu and Love watch this while Luna simply smiles, closing her eyes, making a snap decision. Giyu tells Captain Love to take care of the heavenly army, while he and Lady Roach will stop Leor. Love disagrees and wants to come with undies, but Giyu says he's not going to fight and will only talk. But if it doesn't work, then he'll use his wooden stick. He adds that he only needs Roach Lady for her healing abilities. Without waiting for a reply, Giyu disappears with Luna. While that is the right approach, I still feel bad that Love gets left out. This frustrates Love, thinking she should have just become a healer instead of a fighter. Despite this, she heads to where the users are to help out, but one user screams her real name, making other users focus on her. The pink-haired girl who just screams says she's a big fan, so Love thanks her but reminds her to call her by her IGN. With that concluded, Love heads off to deal with the heavenly army. In a different space, God is relaxing next to an hourglass, commenting on what's happening in the human realm. He smiles, thinking that Luna planned all this. Now that things are rolling, the sin of sloth is finally completed. God finds it fortunate that Riot remained as the ruler of the heavenly realm since having Leor start the war as the ruler wouldn't make any difference in the completion of the sin of sloth. God prefers how things went and compliments Luna for making all these possible. Dang, so everything really is according to Luna's plans. God stands up and appreciates how a lot of things were done because of her. By ticking off a list, God enumerates how every sin is done except for one. With a snap of his fingers, a huge hourglass drops down to indicate the duty of the sin of envy. God recalls how he hoped to give this to Jiyu. But since that guy refused, he has to go with the second option. God smiles, saying he will just push this responsibility to someone else without giving them a choice since getting rejected is not his cup of tea. And with that, God makes his move. Now, God is just being lazy here. An invisible force comes down to the earth and seeks someone. This someone turns out to be Captain Love. As if struck by a huge blow, she falls down with a thud, surprising her fan. A notification from the system appears, announcing her ascension to the second hidden class. Love stands up, and the pink-haired fan asks if Love is okay. But before she could even finish her question, Love slashes the other girl in half. The system notifies the activation of the Sin of Envy's unique attribute. This fuses the Sin of Envy and the soul of the Demon King, creating a new personality in the process, and Love is now the Sin of Envy. No. Do you mean to say that our MC must fight love? How about my OTP?